Hello, welcome to our 1025 ministry this morning as we seek to share with you some encouragement and hope as we go through these difficult times together in our culture and our society. When I was in elementary school, I was what they called a school patrol. Uh, the sixth grade kids would be designated, some of them as school patrols. And what we would do is the children were coming and then when they were leaving school is we would wear special little vests reflectorized we would hold up little flags over the crosswalks and all the smaller children that would walk across the street to get to the school under the protection of our flags as school patrols. And at the end of the year, it was usually late in the spring, a reward that we got for being school patrols throughout those cold winter months was that we would all get to ride on a bus downtown St. Paul and to go to the Barnum Bailey Brothers, their, uh, their circus that came to town each spring. And I always looked forward to that. It was fun to see the acrobats doing their tricks and it was fun to see the clowns coming out of their little car. And I never understood how they all fit in there to begin with. Uh, but the thing that really amazed me the most was when the lion tamer would come out and would tame a growing lion. He would walk into this round cage that was locked shut behind him, and he was alone in with that lion, and all he had was a four-legged stool. And he would approach that lion, and he would be holding up that stool here, and I'm up in the audience with everybody else going, how in the world is he doing this? Is he crazy to be with this huge lion with just a stool between him? But actually the fact of the matter is, this was probably the safest weapon that he could have. For studies show that lions tend to focus on one major thing, but as they were looking at each of the four legs of the stool, the lion's brain could not focus on all four, and thus the lion was paralyzed to come and attack because his mind was in a state of confusion. Actually, when we're not focused on things in life, we tend to become confused in life as well. I don't know how these past couple of weeks have been for you and the members in your family. I'm hearing wonderful stories, however, about how many people here at our church are using this time very wisely to readjust their lives and to set a proper focus as they go forward here. And as we read from God's holy word here, we're gonna look at an example here where blessings have already come out of this virus in our lives. And I believe more blessings are to come to follow. Lessons that our children or their children likely might learn right now to keep a proper perspective as they go through this life. Because prior to this, many of our lives were so unbalanced. In effect, we were trying to balance four different things in life here. We were trying to balance our jobs. We were trying to balance our marriage. We were trying to balance being good parents here. And we were trying to balance our relationship with God. But are those in the right order in our lives? See, many people have it backwards, and their relationship with our Lord is the last of those four things they're trying to balance. And look at what Jesus has to say to us in Luke chapter 12. Jesus told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store all my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And then I'll say to myself, you have plenty of good years laid up for you. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, 
this very night your life will be demanded from you, then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? Jesus wraps up with this, and this is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself, but is not rich towards God. Our Lord's encouraging us to choose what is the very best and not to settle for the good things that this life can offer. Friend, focus on where God wants you to be. Ask him through prayer the things in your life that need now to be readjusted. Spend more time reading God's word so that our Lord can speak to you through his holy scriptures here. Uh, maybe our Lord is calling you to pick up the phone and call some people that you haven't spoken to for a very long time, to renew those acquaintances, but to give them encouragement if they're struggling at this time here. Or maybe our Lord will lead you to serve him some way and somehow. God, always reveals those things to us here. You see, the sharper our focus is, the sharper we are as we live out our lives as followers of Jesus Christ. May God grant this to you, to all of your loved ones, as we seek to sharpen our focus. Amen.